We've been having a, a new idea come up recently. Uh, we've been talking. So the new idea is this for a video. We want to do a video where we have uh, our subscribers send in, if they have any, tapes of them in a match, at a tournament, or honestly, it doesn't even matter. It could just be you rolling in class. And what I want you guys to do is send it to our email, right? We'll put the email in the description below. And then what we want to do is commentate on it. So I'm going to put it on YouTube, give you some exposure if you want it, or really it's just sort of educational. Think of it like a free, not really a private lesson, but it's sort of a free study on your own techniques. So I'm going to be watching it, commentating on it, show you what you're doing really well, show you what you got to work on. So it's not only good for the person that sent in the video, but for people that are watching as well. So just send it to our email. Again, link will be in the description. Not a link, sorry, just the email. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Stacy Jiu Jitsu, Esfan Joseph, wife Bianca. New place I actually moved in about like a month ago. It's a good place, absolutely love it. Big windows, got a lot of nature, a lot of sounds. Amazing, we love that kind of stuff. So anyways, uh, today's video. So basically it's gonna be uh, like sort of like a self-defense topic, pretty much self-defense topic. It's gonna be just slightly controversial because it's gonna be one move, one technique. Uh, I will show, but I'm gonna show it so you don't do it. So yeah, I'm gonna show it so you don't do it. So now we're not gonna be rolling on a uh, like wood floor. We actually got mats. We, uh, you know what, you can just go to Walmart. We got these for, I got this for like 13 bucks. It's a good price, honestly. Uh, I would say, I would say if you're gonna roll on it, I'd probably have a layer of carpet under just to have that extra bit of padding. Now this is a, <laughs> I did get only one like cube of it because we're not really rolling, we're just demonstrating on it. So I just figured, you know what, Man, we don't need it. And if we ended up actually going constantly out of bounds, I might just grab another one. But yeah, so just so you guys know, you don't have to spend like 300 bucks on like one cube of mat space when you can just go to Walmart, get like a nice rig going on, you should be good to go. Okay, so we're gonna get right into it with the first thing that I'm showing you. It's a very uh, common thing that's shown in a lot of schools. Uh, and it, again, it's, it's a good move, but under a very certain circumstance. Otherwise, uh, I find it to be an actual, it could be, it could be a problem in the long term. So let's show it. So basically, she's gonna go right into the mouth. So in a self-defense scenario, just so you guys understand, this is like hands down one of the worst positions next to me being belly down. So belly down, basically, if you just imagine, if I turn my chest towards the ground and then my, my spine is to the ceiling, that's gonna be the worst position because then she's gonna rain punch in the back of my head and it's horrible. So next to that, this, this is the worst position because she has complete range of punching my face and all that stuff and I can't do anything. Like there really isn't much, many submissions I can do. Don't even bother trying to do anything. Your goal is just to get out. So the most common thing is you'll have people reach up, pull them down so that they post their hand. Once they post their hand, they make all sorts of grip variations, whether it's, you know, a gable grip around the elbow. Some people will grab wrist to elbow, any sort of variation. Then they're gonna trap the leg, right? They're gonna trap the leg and then they're gonna bridge to the corner. So they're gonna bridge and they're gonna get right around top into the close guard position. Now again, it's, it's a good move. It is, but against people that don't know anything. Against people that don't know anything, you'll get that almost every time. But what I find to be the problem is, is that when you first teach that move to someone and they're very, you know, start their journey in Jiu Jitsu, what happens is they'll become addicted to it too quickly because they'll find success with it. And what happens is as time goes on and they get better and better and they keep, you know, improving, going to blue belt, purple belt, if it becomes too ingrained in their system, it becomes like a twitch response when the stress of the mount gets too high. So there's other escapes from now. I'm going to show you guys another one today that I would much rather prefer you guys learning. As you keep learning different escapes, you'll learn like elbow knee mount escape. Uh, there's another move that we call a piston mount escape. There's all sorts of different things. Uh, they're more, uh, they're technical versions. They're really high success, I find. The one I'm going to show you is very high probability you'll get it if you practice it and put time into it, obviously, like anything. But if you learn that technique, uh, so I call it the bridge and roll. I think some something is called uh, Upa or something like that. I'm not really 100% sure. I call it a bridge and roll because that's what it is. You're bridging and you're rolling. When they learn that from the beginning, it becomes so ingrained that as you teach them different things, that technique will be their almost their immediate twitch if it gets too stressful and they can't escape from the mount with the elbow knee escape and they resort to that. And against better guys, it's just not really going to work out too well. It just really isn't. Uh, to be honest, I was experimenting with this technique for a little bit with even some of the guys that I train with. 
Uh, one of them is 220 pounds white belt, right? And I, and I did the move on him over and over and over and over and over until eventually it just stopped working. It just, I couldn't do it on him. I really couldn't do it. I couldn't budge him, couldn't even get him to flinch for it. Now, there's a whole bunch of things you can say about, you know, you know he was, it was becoming predictable and all that. But look, I'm a black belt and he was a white belt. I just couldn't get it after a while. So the next one I'm going to show you, again, like I said, higher probability that you're going to get. You really honestly, once you actually practice this move, it's unbelievable how amazing it is. Just before this, you told me to cut it short because I tend to ramble on. And I know I do. I just, I like talking to you guys. I feel like I can just go on for hours and hours and hours. But anyways, okay. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. First thing, elbows are nice and tight. It's tempting I, it, to, to reach up and block your head, but don't do it. Right? Really don't do it. We have different ways of distracting them, making them avoid punching you. Because if you reach up, watch, if he throws a fake strike and I block, right? What's my what's her next reaction? She's gonna punch again, so I'm gonna block again. And then we're just stuck here now. Now I'm just stuck, I'm blocking, I'm panicking, and the more I get punched, the more I'm gonna panic, and I'm just gonna stay stuck here forever. So it it, it sounds weird to say, but don't block your face because we have different things we're going to do. And what I'm going to do is this. So elbows in nice and tight. Really nice and tight. Do not let their knees go in your armpits. Elbows in nice and tight. I want to push against their hips. Using my knee. Watch. One knee. I want to knee them in the back. Make them post their hands. Watch. Right away. Drop one of your feet. Doesn't really matter so much. Make your leg go nice and straight and flat to the floor. Watch now. Have my hand. So she postures up for now so you guys can see. One arm's gonna go across, but I'm gonna keep it nice and tight to my body. Push against the hip, use my elbow, push against the knee. From the knee, I wanna eventually transition to my hand because it's gonna be much better. So now as she posts her hands on the floor, watch as I'm pushing and pushing and pushing, as my knee starts digging to the outside. You guys see what that's doing? Keep pushing, use the outside leg as an assistant, and you wanna drag that foot inside the half guard, completely lock the leg up. So elbows are nice and tight, knee them in the butt, make them post, flatten out one of your legs, start pushing and driving your knee to the outside. Look how that, look how that lifts her leg up. Drag the foot, lock it into the half guard. Now here's where it's gonna get a lot better. The position we wanna fight for now is the underhook position. What is an underhook? Quick jump cut, just to get, give you guys a different angle. So overhook is with her arm going under my armpit and my arm going around her arm. So generally I want to go above her elbow. An underhook is when I go underneath and around her back or her hips. Which is superior? Well, it, there really isn't superior. It all depends on what position we're in. But where we ended up, inside the half guard, we end up with the underhook position. Now what does that mean? Watch what I'm going to do. Once I lock up that leg, I want to hug around the back. You can grab onto a fabric, but just be careful. Fabric tends to slide around. So if we're, having, if we're fighting that with a t-shirt or a jacket, it can move around. So I would recommend just make a nice grip on their lats or on their hips. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn to my side and I want to start lifting them up as I slide myself down. You can see what I'm doing? I'm lowering myself down their hips so that way I can poke my head out, sit up to my elbow, and I look where I end up. As I sit up onto my knees, now I'm in a good position. Not only did I reverse it, now I'm on the back. I can start attacking my seat belt, I can start throwing punches, I can do all sorts of damage from here. Different angle again. So we go into the half guard, so you can like here. So into the half guard, so I push the leg in. I fight for that underhook. Make this automatic. Make it just a part of your habit. Believe me, it's going to be amazing. You'll be surprised at how much, uh, how many times you can actually get this during that escape. Hug the back. You know, you can use your hand to push on the bicep, push on the knee. Start sliding down. Slide down. Hug nice and tight. Poke your head out. Come up on your elbows. And then you can come up on your knees. So that's the reason why I would prefer teaching this from day one. Because again, are you going to be punched whether or not you're doing the first technique I showed you the second? Yeah, absolutely. You're going to get punched either way. It doesn't like, you're not really, there's not much of a difference, a dramatic difference. The difference would be if you chose neither of them and decided to just block your face and do all that, which is what a, like a normal person would do if they haven't trained in combat sports before or, or grappling. So by showing the second one, look now what we're building a habit of. 
We're building a habit of keeping our elbows nice and tight, which by the way is so important, I have no idea. Because if their knees slide up, if both their knees go up in your armpits, they have the ultimate position in the mount, the high mount. So I usually say high mount is king, because once they get there, you're pretty much screwed unless you really know what you're doing. Now imagine doing that from day one all the way up until black belt. Unbelievable, it'll work on anybody. It'll work, work in a self-defense situation, it'll work in just like a tournament situation, in a casual training environment, it's absolutely universal, which is why I would much rather prefer teaching that. Thank you very much for watching, guys. That's pretty much it for today's video. What I'm gonna do is end off with just showing this technique at different angles, just so I can, you know, shut up and have you guys look at the move and just see it for what it is without me interrupting and talking and all that stuff.